For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, joined today by Dennis Hoffman, SVP and GM for Dell Technologies Telecom Systems Business, and Cristino Rodriguez, who is the VP and GM of Intel's Wireless Access Network Division. So thank you both for joining me today to talk through the latest from Dell and Intel, the Power Edge XR8000 and XR5610 servers, which are available with Intel's fourth gen Xeon processor with integrated VRAN Boost. So both the server and the processor are new to the market, but the companies have been working together for quite some time. Maybe to start, we could get some context on that relationship. Dennis? Sure, thanks, Sean. Uh, I'd, I'd love to. You know, this, um, the, maybe a little story to begin. The, the industry, as, as you know well and, and your viewers know well, uh, has struggled a little bit uh, over the last couple of years to try to find the right hardware platform to enable the network disaggregation trend to make its way into the RAN. Uh, we've been made aware of that uh, that problem and uh, with such a long-standing and deep partnership with Intel, it was really the first place we turned uh, to Christina and her team to, uh, to figure out how we solve that problem and put together the right kind of hardware platform to enable uh, the open forms of RAN to take off. And Christina, maybe we can get some perspective from you. Well, first of all, what a great partnership, Dennis, we have. What a fantastic partnership. And we are so happy to be part of this journey with you. Your XR platform, beautiful, phenomenal. The, the industry is so excited about mm -hmm. it. It's generating so much excitement. And I can't wait to see that platform being deployed in the field, running VRAN commercial software. The XR platform together with our, or containing our fourth generation of a Xeon processor with VRAM Boost is a game changing. And uh, we believe that it will offer the operators uh, a, a fantastic way to continue deploying and continue moving on the VRAM journey. Our uh, CPUs is the first one, the first one to have fully integrated VRAM acceleration. We're doubling the capacity previous compared to previous generation within the same power envelope. And uh, because you don't need an external accelerator card, now you have an additional 20% uh, of uh, power reduction in the compute side. So we're really excited, really excited about, about that. If I could follow up there, Christina, there's a lot of discussion in the industry around uh, look aside acceleration versus inline acceleration. And as you noted with the fourth gen Xeon here, the VRAN boost has been integrated into the processor. Can, so can you just maybe expand a little bit on the benefits that that would bring to your end customer, the mobile network operator? Absolutely. The, the RAN workload is a very a complex workload, and it has is very compute intensive. It's, it's, a, it's a complex uh, deployment. And what we're trying to do here, what we're doing here, is simplifying the solution, simplifying the deployment, simplifying the, the supply chain aspect of it. So now what we have is everything that you need to address, to run the most complex pieces of that workload, we have it in the CPU on die with memory share. You don't need anything else. You can run your entire, you can have all the layers of your base station running on one CPU. Yeah, just to add to that, Sean, you know, I, I think uh, as Christina points out, you, the simplification uh, angle here is, is enormous. This debate has largely taken place outside of uh, anybody really deploying and running. Uh, virtualized RAN. It's it's a new thing. It's only beginning to hit the market, and RAN itself is a many segmented market from from somewhat easier use cases of private networks and rural markets to the really difficult ones of you know highly dense urban city environments. And uh, no one, however, is debating the question of if we can do this all on the on the uh, host processor. Then, then we should do it there, because the simplification benefits and the power benefits ripple through the entire the entire system, and literally up into the subsystem in terms of what we have to do. How many parts do we have to manage? How many parts are there to maintain? Uh, how many different components could could in fact fail in the subsystem? 
And so uh, we've been waiting. I think we as an industry have been waiting for this moment for a long time, and we couldn't be more excited to uh, combine uh, the VRAN Boost technology with the XR platform and, and get it out into to the customer's hands. And then, Christina, uh, you know, if I look at all the major global operators, some of them are still relatively early in implementing virtualized radio access networks. Some of them are a lot more mature and have gotten to the point to where they're looking to really not just scale, but take VRAN into new types of uh, dense urban environments and really make highest and best use of massive MIMO. So just help me understand how Intel can really meet these customers where they are and help them regardless of where in that VRAN journey they are. And, the, and this is a journey, by the way, you said it very well. This is a journey. This transition to VRAN is a, is a journey. And, and again, I think what we have here is game changing. What we have can address both the needs of those that have already deployed and those that are starting to deploy. And I'll, I'll go back to what Dennis just said two seconds ago. It's the same platform that you can put in multiple places in the network. But what imagine that, right? What a, what a, what a great advantage that is and, and simplification of, deploy, the, of the problem and the deployment. Now, back to a specific what you were saying, for those that have already deployed, this could be used, this, uh, the, this new CPU and, and, and the platform uh, with it. Um, this could be used in, in, the, in new sites if, if they have already deployed. It could be used for adding site. It could be used also for adding capacity to the existing sites. One of the advantages of um, one of the advantages of Intel architecture is that you can have the legacy ro software running immediately on the new generation. It's a recompile. It's a software recompile. Recompile, and then you get everything that you had before that you had work uh, on for years. Now it's running on the new generation. That is a tremendous uh, advantage. So that's there. Then for those that are ramping that are starting the ramp again this uh, this uh, architecture this new generation with vram boost will give them the best deployment experience and the best total cost of ownership and then in addition to do, to to that the, the other thing that we're doing you you probably know about this is the flex run our flex run reference software that we offer to the ecosystem, not only give them a time to market advantage, but also uh, give them the best, get the best out of our uh, CPU solution. And so this is um, a pretty expansive question, but as we kind of conclude our conversation, I'm interested to hear from both of you, what's next, not just for VRAN, but I guess really what VRAN can enable when we think more broadly about the move towards virtualization, towards cloud native, towards distribution of intelligence throughout the network. Dennis, what are your expectations? I think you've both touched on it a little bit. I, I expect a journey. This is not going to be a, a discrete kind of light switch thing. But there's a disproportionate amount of time, capital, talent spent on the radio access network, uh, you know, in, in the carriers. And so um, when technologies such as VRAN Boost make it possible to move uh, the arch make the architecture from core to edge to RAN, all cloud native software defined industry standard, uh, then the, you'll get the full benefit of the operating changes necessary to truly impact TCO. And remember, the the world does will not you know the operators will not switch their operations over their networks over uh, all at once. They will give different uh, technologies and different combinations of vendors pieces of the network to try, and they will likely start in the use cases for which VRAN uh, works just as well, if not better than, than traditional RAN. And they'll determine the pace of migration to massive MIMO and dense urban and all of that stuff. But the beauty is we're presenting a hardware platform that allows them to not have to make changes to all of that as they do so. And now they're, I guess in some ways, back on Moore's law, right? Now it's, we can do this on the platform we don't have to have a whole bunch of, of cards uh, rallied around the system in order to actually handle this complex workload known as RAN. And so the that entire migration path and journey is made easier as well. So it's it's nothing but positive. And again, as I said at the beginning, we couldn't be more excited to, to hit the middle of August and get this out. 
I totally, totally agree with you, Denise. I couldn't have said any any better. As that's that's exactly. There's so many possibilities now in, in a software environment with a common with a platform that is that is well established, well known, and uh, you know the the amount of innovation that will the, the rate of innovation will continue increasing more and more. I, I think VRAN, without a doubt is set for significant uh, growth, and we're very excited about that. I have said before this, and I'll say it again, this is an industry effort, and the collaborations in the ecosystem are important. This collaboration between Dell and Intel is very important for the industry. And Dennis, I am super, super excited of continue collaborating with you and your team at Dell. Looking forward to continue moving the industry forward. Likewise, Christina, thank you. Well, Dennis, Christina, I really appreciate you both taking the time to speak with our audience about the outlook for VRAN and the work that Intel and Dell are engaged in together. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.